Project Iceworm was the code name for a U.S. project to place a network of mobile nuclear missile launching pads under the Greenland ice sheet. The project was launched in 1959 and finally folded in 1966. Before you watch this video, I'm going to ask you to support my channel with a thumbs up. It won't cost you anything, but it means a lot to me and my channel. Thank you. According to U.S. military plans in the ice sheet of the island were to place a system of tunnels with a total length of 4,000 kilometers, deploying there about 600 missiles with nuclear warheads. According to the plan, the location of these missiles in the tunnels was to change periodically, making it difficult to destroy them. By the early 1960s, the U.S. military faced a serious problem, by which time the USSR had begun mass deployment of its intercontinental ballistic missiles. The response was to build up its own ICBMs, but in the eyes of U.S. generals such missiles had disadvantages, which included deployment in relatively vulnerable and destructible positions, the main hope being inaccuracy of enemy strikes. The second problem was not at all obvious and had to do with the inner workings of the U.S. military. All ICBMs were subordinated to the U.S. Air Force Strategic Command, but not to the Army, which felt left out. All missiles were taken away from Army units and transferred to the Air Force and NASA. At the same time, the budget for this area was reduced to a quarter of its former funding, and all functions of Army units were reduced to guarding missile bases. At the same time, the Army possessed various tactical nuclear weapons, but dreamed of long-range strategic missiles. Project Iceworm The Iceworm project being implemented in Greenland was an Army project. It was proposed in 1960 by the Army Engineering Research Center. The plan was to deploy about 600 Iceman ballistic missiles in Greenland. These missiles were to be an upgrade of the Minuteman, a shortened two-stage version, their range was estimated at 6,100 kilometers, and they were to carry a warhead of 2.4 megatons in TNT equivalent. The missiles were planned to be placed in tunnels under the ice, and the ice was to protect the missiles from detection and complicate the process of their destruction. The U.S. Army Command believed that in this deployment the missiles would be less vulnerable than Air Force launch facilities, while having more reliable and secure communications with their headquarters than strategic submarines. The U.S. military first settled in Greenland back in World War II, occupying the island for fear of possible German takeover. After the war ended, Greenland became much more strategically important, as the island was on the air route line between the Western Soviet Union and the United States. The Americans used the island to house reconnaissance planes, strategic bombers, air defense facilities and other military installations. The strategic importance of the island had grown so much that the U.S. government even came out with a proposal to buy it from Denmark as early as 1946. The Danish government rejected the deal, but allowed the Americans to place military bases. The first regulating this agreement was signed in 1951, and the agreements signed by the countries did not mention anything about the permission to store nuclear weapons at the U.S. bases, this issue was not even raised during the negotiations. At the same time, the territory of Greenland itself was and remains very difficult for any work, 81% of the island is covered by a sheet of ice, the average thickness of the glacier, 2,300 meters. Naturally, the climate on the island is very harsh, mostly Arctic and subarctic. At the U.S. Air Base at Tooele, the northernmost U.S. military base, the average temperature in January is about minus 29 degrees Celsius. At the same time, the island is blessed with fairly strong winds and a polar night in winter. It was 150 miles east of Thule Air Force Base and was to be located the new complex. The researchers hoped to lay a network of tunnels that were dug into the ice shell-like trenches, followed by an arching overlap. The tunnels were to connect rocket launching complexes located at least 4 miles apart, about 6.5 kilometers, with at least 1 meter of ice above them. In the event of a nuclear war, missiles from Greenland could easily reach targets in the Soviet Union, 600 missiles would be enough to destroy about 80% of targets in the USSR and Eastern Europe. The plans called for missiles to be moved between launch sites on special small trains. A network of tunnels and launch pads was to be controlled from 60 command centers. The missile launch pads and command centers were to be provided by small nuclear reactors, and the total area of the built complex would be 52,000 square miles. 
that's about three times the size of Denmark. It was the area of the complex that was its defense. Missiles located under the ice cap 4.5 miles apart would have required the enemy to use huge numbers of bombs and missiles to destroy all positions. Technology in the late 1950s and early 1960s simply could not detect missile launching positions under the ice, which meant that the USSR would have had to retaliate almost squarely, wasting precious missiles and bombs, of which there were not many at the time. A total of 11,000 people, including Arctic Rangers and air defense system operators, were planned to service the complex. Air Force and Navy representatives considered the project to be clearly excessive. It was planned to spend $2.37 billion on its implementation, including an annual expenditure of $409 million in 1960 prices. It was believed that such a base would be vulnerable to a possible Russian landing, but the Army Command had its own counterarguments. In particular, it was noted that the facility was located far away from major population centers, which would reduce civilian casualties from a possible nuclear war. At the same time, the launching complexes would be permanently in communication, the communication via a wire telephone network would provide better protection than via radio. In addition, the new missiles would have to be more accurate. Eventually, the project was indeed given the green light, and the military began work. Implementation of the Iceworm Project In the spring of 1959 a site was chosen to begin work, a research station was established 150 miles from Thule Air Force Base, the starting point of the entire project, called Camp Century. According to the project, the camp was to be located under the ice at an altitude of 2,000 meters above sea level. The necessary construction equipment was delivered to the campsite, including powerful rotary units designed for trenching. Tunneling for Camp Century 21 tunnels with a total length of 3,000 meters were excavated during the work at Camp Century, and all the infrastructure necessary for living and working was created in a small town in the snow. While the process of digging some of the trenches was underway, inside the others there was a process of assembling carriage buildings out of a wooden frame that was clad with prefabricated panels. All buildings were placed on wooden foundations to keep an air layer between the floor and the snow base of the tunnel. A similar layer was maintained along all walls to prevent them from melting. In addition to these measures, special ventilation wells were made that extend to the surface for additional heat removal. All communications, plumbing, heating, electricity were carried out, and the pipes were covered with a thick layer of thermal insulation. If this video gets 300 likes I'll understand that you are interested in this topic and will definitely shoot a sequel. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.